past. One of the reasons that Tolstoy's novels are so long is because it was important for Tolstoy to show the length of the human journey. His characters are searching and seeking and struggling and suffering and hitting dead ends, and yet they're also experiencing some of the most incredible moments of bliss in all of world literature. One of my favorite characters, and the one that I most associated with when I was a freshman in college, is Pierre Bezukhov, one of the heroes of War and Peace. Just curious, who's read War and Peace? That's impressive. Usually, zero hands go up. It, B, Pierre is a big-hearted, bespectacled, uh, slightly overweight idealist when the novel begins. And maybe that's why I liked him, because I was all those things, too, when I was 20 years old. And so the novel begins, and he's come back from Europe. He's uh, uh, been, uh, uh, spent five years there getting educated, uh, as many aristocrats did. And he receives an inheritance, and now he's got the second largest fortune in Russia. And everybody wants to be, be Pierre's friend. And because Pierre is such a big-hearted guy, he wants to be everyone's friend, and he wants to please everyone. So Vasily Kuragin uh, manipulates him into marrying his beautiful daughter, Helen. And the reader knows this is a disaster. Pierre doesn't love Helen. She doesn't love him. They get divorced, obviously. And then when, in Pierre, when Pierre is in one of his many moments of depression, he meets a Freemason, Bazdiev. This is a kind of spirituality peddler back, uh, back then. Freemasonry was very popular. And Bazdiev says, well, if you become a Freemason, you will, you will discover the ideal. You will discover the universal brotherhood of man, which you're looking for. So Pierre doesn't just become a Freemason. He becomes the best Freemason that there is. He starts to give talks, and he starts to rise the ranks of Freemasonry. He frees his peasants under the influence of Freemasonry. Um, and, and he's walking around his estate thinking, God, how easy it is to do so much good in the world. And yet his peasants are fleecing him. They're taking advantage of him. They're stealing from him. But he doesn't see any of this. He falls in love with Natasha. The only problem is Natasha is betrothed to his best friend, Andre. And then Napoleon enters Russia, and Pierre decides he wants to see what battle is like. So he goes to the battlefield, and there's Pierre in his white summer hat with bullets flying all around him. And the soldiers are like, what is this guy doing here? But they like him. He's a good guy. And then he returns to Moscow, and then he decides he wants to become the savior of Russia. So he's going to assassinate Napoleon. So on his way to saving Russia, instead he saves a young girl from a fire, and then he saves an Armenian woman who's being arrested by a French soldier. And the French soldier thinks that Pierre is a spy, so he arrests him, and now Pierre is a prisoner of war. And for the next six weeks, he's marching as a prisoner of war. And one day, he's called, after all of this, one day, he's called to the firing squad. Pierre's going to be executed. Well, actually, he thinks he's going to be executed. He's just been called to witness an execution. And he witnesses that execution. And his entire world is shattered again. His entire world, his sense of purpose has fallen apart. How is it that, one, that, that men can kill other men like that? What is this force? And when he is in that position, he's thrown into a shed, and he meets the wise old peasant Platon Karataev. Platon gives him a potato. And never in Pierre's life has he ever tasted anything more delicious. You see, in that moment, after all of the, that journeying and traveling, when Pierre has been stripped of everything, of his possessions, of his money, of his power, of his clothes, his strength, his very sense of meaning, when he's been stripped of everything, he discovers something that he hadn't understood before. In all of his searching, he discovered the sheer joy and beauty of simply being alive. In that moment, he discovers that, he glimpses that Tolstoyan truth, that that Tolstoyan truth with a capital T, and he realizes it's right here, right now, in this moment. It's all around him. It's within him. In that moment, he discovers the peace of war and peace, which is not just the absence of war, but it's that tranquility that all of us seek amid the chaos of, of life. But you see, if Pierre were told that all he had to do to, 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 to get that revelation was simply to follow what the, what, what the Freemason, Freemasonry told him to do, or the path that had been laid out by his father, or the dictates of, of society. If this is all he had to do, or read a self-help book, or go on Dr. Phil, or, read, or, or listen to Oprah, both of whom I love, 
But this would have cheapened his discovery. What makes that discovery so profound and compelling is how hard and how long he had to struggle in order to achieve it. Pierre has to go through the war in order to find his peace. And here I'd like to suggest a second definition of the word that's translated as peace in War and Peace. The word is mir. In Russian, it also means world, cosmos, war and the world. Perhaps all of our life is a necessary battle. Not just the battle that takes place out there between peoples and nations and in society, but for Tolstoy, even more importantly, the battle that takes place in here between who we are and who we are continually striving to become. But something happens with Tolstoy's